In today's video, I will be going over genetic disorders in the certain communities that may be affected more than others. As we all know by now, a genetic disorder is a disease that is caused by a change or mutation in one individual's DNA sequence. Unfortunately, it is extremely difficult to predetermine if a child will be affected by a genetic disorder, as in many cases, neither parent is a carrier of the disorder, and the genes become mutated throughout the pregnancy. And with mutations, often the effects of certain diseases are experienced more heavily. However, over the years, with incredible scientific and medical advancements, doctors and other professionals have been able to identify certain mutations that may be more common to one race than another. Now with that being said, let's talk about one of the most well-known examples of a certain mutation affecting a certain population of people. The first example comes with the Ashkenazi Jewish community. Within this population alone, scientists and doctors have targeted roughly five genetic diseases that are common among these people, however rare on the global scale. One of these five is Tay-Sachs disease, which is extremely rare in the general population. You may be asking, what is Tay-Sachs and why are these diseases prevalent within just this group? But just wait, because throughout the video I'll be explaining this and more. According to the National Goucher Foundation from a study in 2017, roughly one in five Ashkenazi Jews, and especially those with Eastern European descent, are carriers for certain genetic diseases. Researchers believe that Ashkenazi genetic diseases arise because of the common ancestry many Jews share. While people from any ethnic group can experience diseases, Ashkenazi Jews are at a higher risk for certain diseases because of specific gene mutations. Scientists call this propensity to developing these disorders the founder effect. Hundreds of years ago, mutations occurred in the genes of certain Ashkenazi Jews. The carriers of these newly mutated genes were unaffected, but their descendants were at a greater risk for developing genetic diseases as a result of inheriting mutated genes. Over the course of Jewish history, many mutated genes have been passed on from generation to generation. One of the more dangerous mutations is Tay-Sachs disease, which is a condition that progressively destroys nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord. This condition is inherited in an autosomal recessive pattern, which means that both copies of the gene in each cell have mutations. The parents of an individual with an autosomal recessive condition each carry one copy of the mutated gene but they typically do not show signs and symptoms of the condition. The most common form of Tay-Sachs disease becomes apparent in infancy. Infants with this disorder typically appear normal until the age of three to six months, when the development slows in muscles used for movement, motor skills begin to weaken, such as turning over or sitting and crawling. Children also develop an exaggerated startle reaction to loud noise. Seizures, vision and hearing loss, and intellectual disability are all direct symptoms of the disease. Infantile forms of Tay-Sachs disease result in life only into early childhood. Outside of the Ashkenazi Jewish community, cases of Tay-Sachs disease are generally milder as they are not a direct result of the founder effect. In this picture here, we can see the gene HEXA, which is a gene that is affected by the Tay-Sachs mutation, where the production of beta-HEXO-A enzyme is disrupted, causing toxic levels of the GM2 ganglioside to build up resulting in the damaging of critical tissues. For those who don't know, GM2 ganglioside is a surface marker that aids in cellular recognition and cell-to-cell -cell communication. Even though Ashkenazi Jewish people are at a great risk passing on the Tay-Sachs gene with a 1 in 27 chance of carrying the gene, there are two other diseases that are even more prevalent in the community, which are Goucher disease and cystic fibrosis. Ashkenazi Jews have a 1 in 10 and 1 in 24 chance of carrying either of these genes respectively. The first and more common of the two diseases is Goucher disease, which is a result of a buildup of certain fatty substances in certain organs, particularly in the liver and spleen. Over time, this causes organs to enlarge and can affect the overall function. The fatty substances can also build up in the bone tissue weakening the bone and increasing the risk of fractures. Goucher's disease has three main types. People with type 1 are usually able to live a normal life. People with type 2, however, are less fortunate, and the disease becomes fatal within two years of diagnosis. 
Lastly, patients with type 3 gaucher disease generally have a life expectancy of 20 to 40 years following diagnosis. The second of the two diseases is cystic fibrosis, which is a hereditary disease that affects the lungs and digestive system. With this disease, the body produces thick and sticky mucus that clogs the lungs and obstructs the pancreas. The disease is caused by a mutation in the CFTR gene, which helps regulate the movement of salt in and out of cells. Without this gene acting properly, mucus becomes thick and sticky in the respiratory and digestive systems. Cystic fibrosis, also known as CF, can be life-threatening, and people with the condition tend to have a shorter than normal lifespan. However, with today's modern medicine, many people with cystic fibrosis are able to lead normal lives and live a long time. Before I end this video, I would like to recap a bit of what I talked about. First and foremost, genetic disorders can sometimes be more prevalent within specific ethnic groups or communities. In this video, I only talked about the Ashkenazi Jewish community. However, throughout the world, there are several instances of this happening. Secondly, it's important to know the mutations are often undetectable and can often lead to a person experiencing heavily severe symptoms. In the case with Ashkenazi Jewish people, Scientists have seen this trend and have been able to target the mutation. Next, I talked about the founder effect and how it still affects the Ashkenazi Jewish community today. Lastly, I talked about the three conditions, which were Tay-Sachs disease, Gaucher's disease, and cystic fibrosis, which are the three most common genetic disorders within the Ashkenazi Jewish community. Thank you so much for listening to this video, and I really hope you learned something today.